It's weird to think that the internet, something that is so prevalent and persistent in our lives, something that you're using right now to watch this video, was an obscure piece of technology at the time of its birth in the 90s. Until around the 2010s, the World Wide Web was a World Wide Wild West, neglected by the mainstream and thus more used for stuff like piracy. However, one of the defining features that kept the internet alive was porn. Without connected, everything became, the internet became key for sharing porn, as the industry shifted from videotapes to online sites. And with how accessible it was, people began to find a space in which they could express their weirder sexual preferences or fetishes. This is all well and good since you're anonymous most of the time, but if you're an online figure and have a taboo fetish, people on the internet may ridicule you for it, or kink shame. But at what point does the ridicule end and these serious questions begin? Where is the line between weirdly strange and outright abhorrent and disgusting? In 2020, several tweets came out talking about a popular animation YouTuber known as Jello Apocalypse. Jello had created very popular videos in the early 2010s and was known for his So This Is Basically series, in which he takes a blunt approach to several topics, but as of recent, he had gained a notable amount of hatred against him, from his opinions to manipulative political videos, and these tweets continued to pile in the misery as they sided with the narrative that Jello had a secret fetish account called Pepper Spot Sunshine. This normally wouldn't be concerning, but proof came out showing that Pepper Spot Sunshine had been drawing and writing about underage characters in fetish comics. And if an account like this was tied to a 2 million subscriber YouTuber like Jello Apocalypse, the damage this could do could be irreparable. However, the provided evidence that Jello is Pepper Spot is flimsy and all about the place, and with silence on Jello's end, there really hasn't been a comprehensive confirmation. So this video is my presentation of painful research on this topic to see if it's really real or not. Was Yellow Apocalypse an innocent man slain by rumours of interest that weren't his own, or is he on the same line as people like Animated James? Animated James is often regarded as one of the most influential and iconic animators who pioneered the community into what it is today. You might know him for his video Sonic vs Rainbow Dash, and James had his heyday in the early 2010s alongside Jello. But things all came crumbling down when controversy arose that revealed he had an alternate account expressing his fart fetish. This wouldn't normally be as concerning if it wasn't for the fact that the account also contained drawings of several underage characters in fetish comics, and even people that James knew in real life. That actually smells really good. So how does this relate to our good friend Jello Apocalypse? On the 2nd of August 2017, Animated James tweeted out the following. I won't say who the person is, but there's another YouTube artist with hundreds of thousands of subscribers that's the same kink as me. The Wayback Machine archive of this didn't actually capture the webpage properly, but from the scattered metadata, you can clearly tell that this is real. At the time, Jello was only a few days away from a million subscribers. But for all we know, Animated James could have been referring to literally anyone, so how do we know this was Jello Apocalypse he was talking about? Well, first of all, there are witness accounts that remember James interacting with Jello, making wink wink nudge nudge tweets about the fetish to him. But secondly, and more provable, a significant thing to point out is that at the time of the drama, James had also drawn Lily, a character from Jello's comic series, Cornucopia. The rumours became much more prevalent from a DeviantArt post in September 2017 that restated most of the stuff I just said, apart from that one part at the very end. But wait, there's more. After an argument I had with some of James's fan yesterday, someone sent me a rather interesting note. The note reads, Dude, relax. Stop with the trolling, man. James isn't the only popular YouTuber who makes fart fetish art. Yellow Apocalypse also does. So clearly it's more common than you think. Calm down about it. It's fun. It's not vicious like your comments. Bingo. We just call ourselves a fart lover. Why this guy is so melodramatic about a fetish is beyond my and your understanding, but what's important to know is that this was the first actual mention of this, linking an actual account. However, some random DeviantArt guy noting that there's Jello is still flimsy, but for now, this is all anyone had. So let's flip forward to around two years ago. In January 2020, Jello Apocalypse tweeted out a picture which unfairly criticised a smaller creator for having a different opinion on an anime. This tweet promptly caused Twitter to find these rumours and absolutely go to town on him. Ain't you the dude who drew Isabel uncontrollably farting? I cannot believe, believe that some of you are gifted with the god-given ability to sketch, to draw, to animate, and you use the ability to draw people farting and shitting. Is this a subtweet of Jello Apocalypse? Please don't tell me you don't know. Oh, I know. Ahem. Change his voice to that of Isabel's. I'm not reading that. Jello Apocalypse just keep taking L's, huh? He made the art for Pizza Game, made fun of another YouTuber for having a different opinion than him, got exposed to having a scat fetish. So Twitter has a little bit of fun and mocks Jello for a supposed weird kink. If Jello is his account, is Jello having a fetish something I really care about? 
No. I think it's a bit funny, but I don't think it's anything that's cancel worthy. The real issue is how this account drew underage characters. So let's investigate the name rumoured to be Jello. Jello's alternate account is allegedly a user by the name of Pepperspot Sunshine, a deviant art of Pixiv artists that drew and wrote about their fantasy fart kings and whatever they wanted to. However, if you have a look at their Pixiv, there are actually screenshots that support them drawing underage characters a lot more explicitly, such as a caption of a drawing from Jenny from My Life as a Teenage Robot, who is 15. Notice the first hashtag on the post. XJ9 from My Life as a Teenage Robot Farting. Not actually a big fan of how this came out. She needs a nose. So this is the first claim that Jello's alternate account drew underage characters. What's the second one? Pepperspot Sunshine's other drawing site that I noted was DeviantArt. We'll have a look into this later, but as for now, let's just read through the first story into Pepperspot Sunshine's fetish story series called Witches of Avangrove. This first story is about two people, an older girl named Celeste and a younger boy called Spur, and it directly romanticizes a pedophilic relationship between two people who have a four to six year age difference. To prove this, let's start by reading this excerpt. Come on, I thought you were done being the grossest girl I know. Besides, aren't you a little old to do this to me nowadays? You're like 45 or something, right? I am not 45. Celeste stomped her foot, genuine anger cracking through her cheeky babysitter facade. I'm not even one half of a 45. Could have fooled me, Spur grinned. Half of 45 is obviously 22.5, so Celeste is any age less than 22 and a half. Now, let's read this excerpt. You know, there are more than a few times back home where I'd lay in my bed and think, gosh, I wish Spur was just like four years older. Then I could ask him out and it wouldn't be weird or anything. Alright, so now it's established that there is at least a four year difference between the two. I say at least because Celeste wishes that Spur would be aged up to the point where she could ask him out and it wouldn't be weird, which doesn't necessarily mean the same age. So let's give two years added on for leeway, giving a four to six year age gap. Now, let's just look at this as a real final kicker. No, Celeste responded, more growling in her voice than she attended. Spur muttered an apologetic okay and went about his business. She immediately regretted it. It was hardly Spur's fault that she was a weird, gross, pedophilic harlot. Alright, maybe harlot is a little strong. Now, why would Pepperspot write that in? What kind of fantasy, what kind of audience is that trying to appeal to? Plain and simple, these allegations assume that Jello is writing fetish fantasy about two people with a four to six year age gap. At the very least, it's strange, and at the most, it's really creepy. So, what have we established so far? Well, if Jello is the account, he's the one behind drawing and writing underage characters in several sexual situations. However, the so called evidence that I showed at the beginning was all that the Twitter wave went off to base their rumors. So let's have a look at further evidence that may or may not link Jello close to the account. Probably the strongest piece of evidence there is to support this claim is a screenshot of Jello commenting on a fetish video on YouTube almost 10 years ago, in which supposedly someone is asking for the name of the person in the video and Jello is answered here. And um, yeah, this image is pretty clear cut. Again, does this mean Jello is Pepperspot? No, but this is clear cut evidence that Jello isn't the same fetish as the Pepperspot account. Whilst all of this is massively incriminating to Jello, I'm still looking for something that's solid and confirmed. We also need to study the other side to see if there's anything there that would disprove this link. So it's time to go into the Pepperspot Sunshine account and see what horrors await us. Haha, <laughs> whoops, it's a weird fetish page. I like cute girls who like to fart and pastel colors. Please don't clip this. I like cute girls who like to fart and pastel colors. Feel free to show this page to your friends and laugh because I also find fetishes fucking hilarious. Humans are great. Updates will be infrequent because I spend most of my time animating for my job and drawing for clients. If I took commissions, people would be just be waiting around forever, so I won't. At least not right now. You are free to rate a request if you like, but for the same reasons, I wouldn't get your hopes up too much. We're not even a minute in and I've already sustained major psychic damage. So this is Pepperspot Sunshine, Deviant Art Artist. There's a lot of archives that show that there was clearly a lot of very strange fetish related porn here, and you can even tell from the about page alone. I've slightly blurred further images so you can see what's going on, but not enough details to truly horrify someone. You get the picture though. They do the poo poo. So we've had a look at the evidence, the links, and the Pepperspot Sunshine account. Seems pretty definitive. The account is about, well, shit. And normally I would conclude the video here and conclusively say that Jello Apocalypse lives a second life making scat and fart art of some underage characters and he's a creepy dude. However, many people have left out the biggest piece of evidence that would defend Jello. Sometime during 2020, Pepperspot Sunshine changed the name to Billy Don't Be A Hero, but not before leaving a long post detailing why they are leaving. The first post in October 2019, three months before the Twitter backlash, reads, Stepping away. Hey all, I haven't posted too much in the last few months because my life and financial situation have been getting complicated. I was planning to get into King Cart when some stuff I've been dealing with resolved, but unfortunately, it's just been getting worse. This week, everything came to a head with the death of someone very close to me. I need to take some time to myself. 
Probably a lot of it, so I'm taking a break from posting anywhere for what might be a long while. Thanks for your understanding. Between this time and their next response, Pepperspot Sunshine did not respond to any of the comments discussing Jello and has continued not to. In July 2020, Pepperspot posted another update. This time, however, the post was a lot more in depth. Where I've been. A few people have DM'd me here on Twitter asking if I've been okay since quarantine started, so I figure I should probably make a post about what I've been up to. Last September, I mentioned in a journal post that someone very close to me passed away and I'd be stepping away from the community. That was my dad. I won't go into the gritty details, but he'd been unwell for quite some time, and after a few trips in and out of the hospital, we lost him last fall. My dad dying on his own was hard enough, but on top of that, my mother had been in poor health for the last few years due to some nasty stuff going on with her GI tract, and he was acting as a caretaker. With dad gone, I had to move back to Boston, and I've been taking care of my mom in his place since last September. Things were really bad for a while, stress and grief don't help any medical condition obviously, but since then she's somewhat stabilised. Lately quarantine's been making doctor visits impossible, but other than that she's okay because she's got a prescription and we've got a lot of refills because the insurance covers it. In regards to fetcher stuff, I haven't really been in able to interact with it at all. Mom is bedridden most of the time and my workstation is set up based in the same room as her because she likes to talk. We spend a lot of time together and watch a lot of the same shows to kill time, which is nice, but doesn't exactly make for a good environment for drawing pornography. As far as I'm aware, my mom doesn't know about the stuff I'm into, and I'd like to keep it that way, obviously. Sometimes when she's asleep or from alone downstairs, I can sneak a peek at Twitter stuff on my phone, but other than that, I can't really do anything. There's no indication right now that my setup's going to change anytime soon. Her condition is stable, or at least consistent, but it's bad, and she needs me to do most of the day-to-day -day stuff for her, like shopping and cooking and cleaning. A house has a lot of stairs, and walking down those puts her in too much pain. I wasn't posting about this because I figured things might change for a bit with time, but it's been almost a year and this seems to be my life for the foreseeable future. Could be years even. I don't mind living here that much, but it means I'm essentially retired from fetish work. Even the writing I used to do was too hard to get into without reference material playing in the background. So that doesn't work either. I'm actually thinking about closing up my Pixiv page sometime soon. I have a bad habit of checking it whilst at the computer, again the one across from my mom, and I can't seem to break from my system. Twitter's not too bad because it works well on my phone which I can use downstairs when I'm alone, but Pixiv is a hard habit to break and my phone hates the app for it. So I guess if you like my Pixiv stuff, maybe grab that now whilst it's still up. 90% of the images up there are on DA but there's a few exclusives. You don't need to worry about me axing my DA page because I hate the Eclipse layout so much that I never check it anymore lol. Anyways, sorry if you liked my stuff. I really wanted to finish Witches of Avangrove, even though I was nowhere close lol, but I don't think it's going to happen now. Maybe I'll be back in a few years. Hopefully my mom will get better. We have a family friend who went through something similar and a few surgeries mostly fixed her up, but there's no way to get an appointment until after this COVID stuff is done at the very earliest. Who knows? Until then, I'm signing off. So, is that it? Has Jello been innocent this whole time? This is a very eye-opening story and it completely flips the whole situation on its head, if you want to believe it. You could shout to the heavens that this was a cover story, but do you have any proof of it? Where's your evidence? Uh, well, I haven't got proof, but what I do have are suspicions and discrepancies, which I hope makes up. You see, in this update, Pepperspot says that they were fine with using their Twitter, as they could look at fetish-related media downstairs and alone thanks to Twitter being mobile. And Pepperspot Sunshine also said they'd leave their Deviantart up, yet today both Twitter and Deviantart are purged and barren. So why? It doesn't make sense to me especially the DeviantArt. Also, this really makes me question one thing. In between January and July, Pepperspot Sunshine will question multiple times if there are Jello Apocalypse. Now, I understand they will have been dealing with personal issues, as stated in the post, but when they came back, why didn't they just deny being Jello Apocalypse? The naysayers may have screamed that there's a lie, but they wouldn't have any proof to back it up other than their gut feeling. It seems like such an easy thing to say, but they didn't say it, and I don't know why. It's illogical, and it lines up with Jello's continued silence on the situation. All of this is a decision that just doesn't add up to me, unless Pepperspot was a different person and wanted to erase the kink pass secretly and miss allegations of weird private fantasies. But what do I know? Exactly. What do I know? At the end of the day, it comes down to viewpoints. For me and many others, the coincidences add up too well. Jello's comment, animated James, the discrepancies in the post, Jello and Pepperspot's similar silence on the matter, but to quote Colossal is crazy, at the end of the day, I can only think what I think. I cannot know what I don't know. Personally, I take the boatload of evidence over the two DeviantArt posts, but can I in my heart 100% prove these DeviantArt posts are Jello? Not really, and I don't want to possibly slander some artist who, despite writing some pretty heinous shit, had and is still dealing with the loss of their father. We know Jell is into farts, and that may seem enough for people, but whether he really is Pepperspot, whether he really was the one who wrote those lines and drew those characters, is simply and truly up for debate. 
At the end of the day, this situation should really serve as a testament that the tactic of eternal silence on the matter can work. As mentioned before, Jello never made any public statements on the matter. In fact, he went AWOL for a while and he relied on the unboundedness of people pointing out similarities to the point where we're not sure if this DeviantArt post is just Jello in disguise. In fact, it worked so well that it took two years for anyone to make a video on this subject. Maybe in a different universe he did say something and now all he's known as is the next animated James, but here we can't say for sure. I guess, as the old saying goes, where ignorance is bliss, it's foolish to be wise. Until next time, Stay toasty.